Good morning. My name is Deborah Johnson, and today we're going to start a new series on prayer. Prayer does work, but how? Okay, um, and we're going to we're going to just see how God is working. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you that you are the one that's to direct our thinking as we're led by the Spirit. You direct us in understanding prayer. You change things over time. It depends on what dispensation or time period we live in. Are we under Israel's program and how God's dealing with Israel? Or are we under Paul's distinctive ministry, uh, the time of grace to the Gentiles? We need to discern these things by rightly dividing. We just praise and thank you for this. And we pray that we learn and grow and are open in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, prayer. What is it? It is communion, communing, interacting um, with God. And not just God, but God the Father. He wants it to be an intimate relationship. And our, our prayer life is an ongoing and developing inter, inti, um, intimate relationship. We're to see it that way, and we're to see him as a real person, really hearing and listening and responding. But he responds differently today in the dispensation of grace, and how is that? We're going to get a glimpse of it today. Um, this is the start of a, <clears throat> a series on prayer. There's many, many issues. Um, I thought maybe starting by explaining basically how God deals with us um, is would be important to start off with. Um, <clears throat> and let's just take a look, the comparison and contrast between Israel's program and ours. There's a lot of misunderstanding because what, what happens is we might know how to rightly divide the word and understand timelines, but we still end up taking doctrine um, from Israel's program and apply it to today. We want God to work in certain ways, the way we think, the way we always thought he did. We need to be open and we need to have our mind renewed. Let's go to 1 Kings 8. Um, and starting in verse 35, when heaven, this is, um, by the way, this is Solomon pr uh, praying to God after he just finished the building the temple. And I'm just going to pick up one area of his prayer, but I encourage you to read the whole thing. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee. If they pray toward this place, that's the temple, and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them thy, the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon the land which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. You can see everything about that prayer is about Israel. And it's talking about physical circumstances that's a problem. God, God chose to shut the heaven, give no rain because of their sin. And when they confess it and are sorry, he forgives it and gives them rain. Um, it's the if then. If they do what God says, they get blessings. If they don't, they have curses. That is so not what God's doing today. We have something so much better. So we're just going to look at that one example. There's many, and Israel changed over time with different um, things that God changed up in their program. But I just want to give, that's where people take some of their doctrine from, that kind of idea. <clears throat> and what we want to do is move away from expecting and wanting signs and wonders, intervention, um, and trying to be good to get God in God's favor to get God to do things for us. That is so not this time of grace. Um, 
so what we want to do is realize this dispensational change that when God raised up Paul in Acts 9 and made him our apostle, Romans through Philemon, there is a new way to pray, a new way to approach God because we are positionally perfect in Christ. And positionally, we have all these things. And so God is no longer dealing with the outside circumstances as he did with Israel, signs and wonders. But instead, what he's doing is he's working in the inner man and manifesting his power and glory unto your, you, unto the, the world around you, and even unto the angels, God's angels, Satan's angels. They are learning and watching. And, and so it's the manifestation of Christ in you. That's what we're going to talk about. And so something to keep in mind, we're not going to go over it, but we're already in the dispensation of grace. Once we're saved, we're already forgiven all sins. Colossians 2, 13, forgiven all trespasses. Um, we're freely given all things in Romans eight thirty two, And he says, in 2 Corinthians 12, 19, my grace is sufficient for thee. So we want to keep those things in mind. Go look up those passages on your own to get um, clarity and a good foundation to approach these verses that we're going to talk about. But first, what we're going to do is go to Galatians 2. Many people know this one verse, Galatians 2.20, but let's look at the verse before 2.20. Look at the context for yourself. Verse 19, for I, through the law, am dead to the law. Spiritually, functionally, you are dead to the law. God did that at the cross. You're not under the law, but you're under grace. And so, and the reason he did it, it says that I might live unto God. You no longer have to, in the energy of your flesh, try hard to keep a law, any law, to get the good graces of God. He's freely given you all things already. We'll go to that passage in a minute. God's working differently. He couldn't work this way in Israel because we have the Holy Spirit and the completed word of God. The Spirit and Christ the Word the Godhead in us. They did not have that. That was promised to them later in the new covenant. Um, verse 20, Galatians 2.20. I am crucified with Christ. Your old man has been crucified. It is dead. You have no identity in Adam any longer. You are in Christ. You can't have two identities. God totally took you out of Adam and put you in Christ so that you can have all the blessings. Nevertheless, so I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. You're dead, but you live. Yet not I. He's explaining how you can live unto God. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. It is Christ. You're not reflecting God, uh, Christ's love. You're not reflecting the word of God. It is the word of God being manifest out of you. It's so different than reflection. I cringe when someone says that because it's so limiting and it's so much less than what God has truly done. He's done so much more than that. I do not frustrate the law, uh, the grace of God, for if righteousness can't come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. We don't want to keep trying in our own energies. It is Christ in us living. Think on that verse. We might know it, but do we really understand it in our heart to live it? It's an important verse. Let's go to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 4. We are just picking out a few of some of the key verses that come to mind when I think about how God's working. Um, 2 Corinthians 4, 
Let's start in seven. It says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels, broken clay vessels with cracks and mars on it. He he says he's given us treasure in these earthen vessels. This is why, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. So he says in six, for God who commanded the light, that's the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, Christ himself, the light to shine out of darkness in these earthen vessels, it's darkness, hath shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. He is being manifest in us. And so just to give more detail, go back up to verse four. And as I say, this whole chapter is such a wondrous chapter to help us understand God's mind. We're just going to pick a few things. It says it's talking about the gospel being hid in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Christ, the word, shines out of us and it shines to others. And Satan wants to inhibit that. We don't want to allow that. So we need to be aware and self self-aware and aware of what the doctrine is and how to apply it. Meditate, read, think about these things to apply it. Look at uh, verses uh, 17, 16 through 18 of uh, 2 Corinthians 4. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish and problems happen and difficulties, God has made it so his grace is sufficient to go through the difficulties as we rely on the word. It says, though our outward man perish, yet our inward man, that's the issue, is renewed day by day. Stay in the word daily to stay focused above and to dwell on things for our light affliction. We see it as heavy and the weight of it is overpowering, but it's light affliction as we focus above and our inner man uh, is led by the spirit. It's but for a moment. We think it's so long, but it's not. It's for a but a moment. And it worketh for us. God has turned it around and worked all things as we believe to for our good. It worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And this is how we do it while we look not at the things which are seen but at the things which are not seen, not, not the physical things, not exalting the problem and wanting everything to change, but rather realizing God's working in the inner man, except God's way. It's much more wonderful than what Israel had constantly under the law and making mistakes and losing blessings. We've got, we've got such a better situation. It says, for the things which are seen are temporal, temporary, physical, but the things which are not seen, what we want to focus on, are eternal in heaven. And God has given us this grace that's sufficient. Um, let's go to Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3, this whole chapter again is just so so good. Let's just pick it up um, in verse 4, 3, 4, and realize Paul is talking about his mystery, the mystery gospel message, Romans through Philemon, verse 4, where, whereby when, we, when ye read, ye may understand my, that's Paul's knowledge, in the mystery of Christ, it was hidden before, now it's being manifest in, in Romans through Philemon to read it. When you read it, you have Paul's understanding. It's not just Paul having all those revelations and you're, you're somewhat uh, less um, in a lesser position than Paul was. You can have his understanding as you read and study and believe his word. But let's just keep going on. Let's skip for time. Let's skip up to seven. It says, whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God. That's the 
the, the Romans to Philemon doctrine given unto me by the effectual working of his power. It's his power in that gospel being given to us as we take it in and are renewed. And as we, we um, gain the mind of Christ and are conformed to his image, it says unto me who are, who am the least of the least of all saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. That's what we're given, the unsearchable riches of Christ. And it can be deposited in our inner man so that we have the power and wisdom of God to shine forth. And it's to make all men in verse 9 see the fellowship of the mystery. But I want to especially go to 10. To the intent, this is the reason, that now... Unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places, the angels, the angels. It's manifest what's going on in our inner man, manifest to them. We're teaching them. Their role is different with man now in the dispensation of grace. There's learning from us. They used to be helping Israel. Today, they are they're watching and learning. Christ is being manifest in a new and powerful way. It says... Um, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church. That's the body of Christ, the manifold wisdom of God. They see the manifold wisdom and the power, the working power of God. And just one of my favorite verses, I've, since we're here, I've got to read it. Verse 20, now unto him that is able, God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us it's within us asking for god to do some things outside it's denying the power of the gospel it's really not seeing what god's doing today we need to really understand this and so today he's changing you he has made a new creature. He is conforming you to Christ's image. He is giving you his mind. And the spirit is to lead you through that doctrine, Christ the word. And he is enabling you to go through the difficulties, whatever they are. His grace is sufficient, that doctrine. And um, he also does the same thing in the body of Christ as they believe and allow their inner man to be changed and renewed. Um, that's how God works today. And as we pray, we need to keep that in mind. There'll be more to come on this. Study these things. Make them your own. If you have questions, email me, lifecoachesdjbj at yahoo.com. My husband or I uh, will be able to answer your questions or get you to someone that can. And, you, and, and just focus above. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time in your precious son's name. Amen.